Hi. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Women in the Nude podcast. My name is Sasha. This is where we bear it all, except for our bodies. We'll leave that to your imagination. I am so excited. Mm-hmm. I have Nikki Garcia here with me. I love her. Oh my gosh, she's amazing. You might uh, recognize her as um, Nikki and Brie from Total Bellas or the Bella Twins. She's so much more than that, though, as amazing as that is. She is an amazing mom, an amazing new wife, which is even better. And so many exciting things going on in your life. You have a wine company. I mean, Benita, it's just, you're amazing. I can't wait to chat with you. And uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. (laughs) I'm so excited to be on. I just, I love everything this represents and I love you too. And it's been too long. So I'm so excited to chat. Thank you. I know it has, I mean, time flies. We've both gotten married. We both have babies, both have boys. Which is so yeah. awesome. I love being a boy I mean, mom. I am obsessed with being a boy mom. It's, it's it is truly the greatest love ever, like ever, ever, yeah. ever. Yeah. Oh, I completely agree. They're just so fun. Yeah. And I, I was just on your podcast, which was so much fun. Yeah. Um, Thank and you. we, it's- yeah, we chatted a bit about being boy moms, being moms in general and how crazy it is that we've got toddlers. Um, and I, I'm just so happy for you. It's just so cool. Oh, How is Artem? You. Is Artem just like oh my so fun as a dad too? I can imagine. He, he is. You know, it was funny because I was talking to Nikki Glazer recently yeah. and she was like, I just, when I was doing Dance in the Stars, I kept staring at Artem because he's just so serious. And she's like, I know Nikki and Nikki's just so outgoing and wild and all these things. And how does that work? Like, how do they get coffee together? How do they sleep together? Like all the things. And um, it's crazy because Artem, he's very outgoing with me and he still like has this serious side to him, but it's been incredible to see him grow as a father. Um, He just lights up with Mateo and you know, he was grown, like how he was raised, they didn't, the men weren't as, as as affectionate with each other. And I think that's made him, unless he's just seen me do it, but be so affectionate with Mateo I and to that. see him do like the baby talk stage. And now like how he's trying to teach him like in the toddler stage, it's just like, he's such a good dad, like really good dad. Um, he puts in so much effort where sometimes I'm like, okay, let's put a little effort into the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's so good. I'm so blessed. Like, so lucky. I absolutely love that. And uh, as far as, like, my time with Artem, just – that's totally – he's – Mysterious is the perfect way of describing him. Yeah. I feel like you bring out so much of, like, that playful, amazing energy that he has that he kind of, like, kept under wraps. <laughs> I just remember Honestly. after every episode of Dancing with the Stars, he would just be like – like the sad boy at the bar. <laughs> uh, it's so true. But he's so great. He's he's so friendly. He's such a, a great human. And uh, you two are just so good together. It makes sense. And that makes me so happy to hear that he's that way with, uh, with Mateo. I mean, my family is very affectionate. I'm Dutch. Um, and my family is very affectionate. But there is like a hard side to the men still in general. And yeah. Hudson, my husband, his family also wasn't as affectionate. And so that's really important mm-hmm. to me in a relationship, but definitely yes. with our, you know, with Hendrix and as, as a mom and as for Hudson as a father. And it is, it's so cool to see your spouse or your partner just in general be uh, a parent. It's wild. It's so wild. It's, You know, I get when they say like, Brie would like prep me with a lot of things. And she's like, your relationship will change as far as being lovers and being what you have now. But she's like, you find this new love for your partner once they become a parent. And I used to tell her, no, we'll have it both. We're going to have it all. And it definitely does change. Um, And I think it changes because of the new love you have for them. It's like, you love them so much more than just being this lover and this romantic partner. It's like you love them as a best friend and you appreciate them more as a human being. And then them just being a part of your child's life and knowing that they helped 
make that. You just have this, it's like you naturally get an unconditional love for them that you didn't have. And so I think that's like the whole reason why it like changes is like, even when the sex isn't the same or certain, the flirting isn't the same, but it's like, you have this love where, you know, like, no matter what, like, this is it for us. Like we're family, we're a unit. We may hate each other at one point, but we know we're going to be okay. <laughs> Cause you know, you have those moments. Um, and that's like been what I've loved so much is like having that family feel like this is it no matter what. Like, yeah. It's us. Yeah. You know, it is so cool. And yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Your relationship changes and it's yeah, obviously always hopefully for the better. And I feel like our relationship, my Hudson and I, that our relationship is absolutely f- for the better. And yeah, it's just yeah. this extra level of understanding how somebody works too. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we should always, yeah. Yeah, you should never want to stop learning new things about your partner. At the end of the day, mm-hmm. we will always be changing um, and evolving, yeah. you know, I, I don't think you ever fully know everything about your partner and seeking that is so important. And I will say mm-hmm. I've, I had gotten this advice before we even got married and I love it so much. And I, and I, we, we build our relationship, Hudson and I build our relationship around this, which is to put each other first before Hendrix, mm-hmm. which sounds terrible in ways. So so many people are like, oh, that, you know, that sounds wrong. Your kid should be first. And obviously with certain things like safety and, (laughs) you know, there's definitely things that, yes, your kid absolutely comes first. But it's so important for us as a couple to put our marriage first and put our relationship first because we won't be the types of parents that we want to be. We won't give him the foundation that we want to give him if, Hudson and I are, you know, uh, rocky for whatever, for whatever reason, Um, whether that means, you know, constant communication, whether it means dating each other the way that we used to, you know, there's these little things that make your relationship stronger and and keep it in check. And nobody's perfect. No relationship is perfect. It's always going to be a process. But that's kind of what I always try and remember is like, okay, try and take a step back and assess each situation and and make sure that, you know, that everything is kind of aligned in the way that we, we want it to be. But yeah, it's very, it's very easy to, you know, not like your partner sometimes. No, but you're so, it's like, you're so right. Cause Artem and I have definitely have had to do therapy. Like we've been in therapy a few times, like, which I always tell them, like, we just need to be consistent. Cause I'm consistent with it in my own life but we go on and off with it. And that was like the one thing our coach helped us with was like about putting each other first and how important it is to date each other, make time for each other. And then also check in with each other every week and not get defensive to like really sit and listen to each other. Like, Hey, how are you? Is everything great? Is what we're doing as a family working? And, um, and I feel like those moments have helped Artem and I a lot because I felt like for a while we we did that. Mateo was first, our relationship wasn't, and I felt like we were just like kind of separating and like we were becoming like our own people and just what brought us together was Tay. Um, and so you're so right about that. And once we switched that, it was like I felt like we just fell in love even deeper. It's like yeah, it it it, it does help it make it better. It's Imparting stuff. You need it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it's always easier said than done, right? It's definitely easy to be like, yeah, it's just simple. You just put, you know, him first instead yeah. of yourself. It's it's so <laughs> yeah. not easy. Uh yeah. it's always, you know, it's always work, but it's it's the best kind, you know, and it obviously pays off. And I, I think this this new, I feel like world of like couple therapy is also so healthy. Hudson and I haven't yeah. haven't done it, but I know so many of my friends that have and do it on a regular basis. And there's not like a like a major issue that they're trying to work out. And it's just like it's it's almost it's like training in a way, you know. It's like keeping keeping it up, keeping those uh, communication avenues open, and and yeah, checking in with your your partner all the time. I think it's 
so healthy and so important. And I'm so glad that we're at this point in society where therapy, and believe me, it definitely is still ne- needs work as far as the way that it's thought about. But but therapy is finally at a place now where it's not looked down upon. I feel like you know my generation, your generation is finally seeing it as like, this is so healthy and it's an asset. It's not a weakness. Yeah. We we should all be working on ourselves. Um, yeah. Thank God, because it's it's so sad. I mean, I know like uh, I grew up thinking that I, – I don't think that I personally had a bad lens for therapy, but I grew up knowing that people that were older than me thought it was weak, that it was a weakness, yeah. that there was something terribly – wrong with you if you went to therapy. Yeah. And I think that is just so sad and it's so backwards that we are we are like pushing things under the rug and not wanting to acknowledge anything because we're, you know, afraid of what other people will think. That's such a huge threat in people's lives and hopefully we're we're kind of, you know, starting to get over that yeah. hump. Totally because like for me, I always look at it and I know it's such so weird to compare it in this way, but like a car, like we get oil changes and all this before a car breaks down. We don't wait for a car to break down and then try to fix it. We always keep up with it. Yeah. So we always get a nice ride. And I've always compared relations, relationships to that. Like you just got to keep working on it and fixing it. Um, even if it doesn't need fixing, but just so it doesn't break. And yeah. um, I think that's, what's been so amazing in our relationship is there are things that you end up opening up to when you have someone who um, is mutual and like has no actual like real relationship with you except being your coach. And it's yeah. like you, both of us would open up so much more in those moments and it would, you would be like, why haven't you told me this before? Like, and yeah. you just need someone to get it out of you. And and sometimes it could be hard and sometimes it could be great. Like meaning like you get back into that argument, but then you have someone there to help you work it out. And um, right. yeah, I do. I've done it for myself for so many years. And honestly, I wouldn't be where I'm at now. The mother I am, the entrepreneur I am and the wife I am without doing the work, yeah. without having a life coach, therapist, bringing it into my relationship. Yeah. So it. It's truly life changing, all for the yeah, best. Yeah, so important, actually. So you uh, mm-hmm. talking about this kind of actually brought this to my mind. How is it having your relationship on TV? Because that is something that I know. Sorry, that's a big question. You don't have to answer. It. You don't want to. But I never even no. yeah, that never even crossed my mind. Like holy shit, that no. that must be very hard. Oh, you know, I felt really bad for Arm in the beginning because I've been doing this for over 10 years now. So I got used to it. But the thing that's hard about having a relationship on TV is when you relive fights Mm. and then you're also bringing the world into your relationship. So you're allowing people to have judgment or opinions on your relationship. And, and sometimes because we're filming and things already like you're like, you're just, you have this, not anxiety. I'm trying to think of the word, but you're already feeling a certain way. And so I feel like your emotions are already kind of higher when you're filming. It's kind of like, even when people are on dating shows, like your emotions are just, you're a little bit exhausted and there's people in front of you filming. So then when you're doing, when it's your relationship, I feel like that's why so many people haven't made it in the reality world because it just brings up a lot. And, and I think there's a lot of people behind the scenes encouraging that. But Artem, like our place wasn't like that, which was great, but it was still really hard for me. It was hard for me to have a public breakup and to live that life so publicly because I didn't realize what would come with that. And then for Artem stepping into that and coming right into my world, like he was very shocked. And then I didn't realize the judgment and opinions that would like come to him about it. And it actually was really hard on a relationship for a while because he was constantly compared, um, whether right. it was to my ex or to how my former relationship was, because people had watched it for six years. Um, and then it would make it hard on us. We'd be, it, it would either cause arguments on like what the world was saying or reliving a certain moment. And he just wasn't prepped as much for it, but I didn't expect it. And 
for a while, it got really hard on us, but then Artem got the hang of it. And I think I showed him like, Artem, you have to have thick skin in this business. Yeah. And I was willing to be like, we'll never again do anything if this is what you don't want. But then I try to show him the positivity of it. And it's still hard. Yeah. Like in our wedding special, we got into it and it was a really deep and raw conversation. And then you have conversations with other people behind each other's backs right. and then you're going to watch oh, it. Yeah. So we had some arguments and like, and he was just also like when um, my a and &E documentary came out and it showed like a decade of my life, maybe almost two decades of my okay. life. So there were things that he had to see. And he was like, you know, it's, I just don't want to see you kiss people, I guess, in the past. Like, that's, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm like, yeah, I guess I've never really thought of that, of it that way, but um it definitely has hard moments, but the one thing that has kept me doing it for so long is I have so many women that constantly come up to me and they're like, I went through the same situation as you and how you came out of it helped me come out of it. And I, I just started to realize that people were learning from either my mistakes or like what I went through and um, the hard decisions I had to make. And so that makes it easy, but it's definitely takes a toll on your relationship. That's for sure. Yeah. You have to definitely be with someone strong enough to cancel out the noise and know that like what you still have is strong. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you guys do it well and I'm, I'm happy to see that Artem has come into his own in that way too, because yeah, that's, it's, that's so tough. I, I would think I would just in general struggle with that. And like you said, not being, you know, you have to like get conditioned essentially. I mean, you've trained yeah. for so many things in your life but that just like kind of like went with it. But yeah, yeah, for him, that's, yeah, that's all just so different. It's a totally different life. Um, you guys look so good together. You're, you it just seems so happy. It's just, it's cool to have met you when I did and to see this <laughs> progression in your life is just so awesome. Uh, so that yeah. just, yeah, that makes me so happy. Um and Thank you. yeah, of course, you are a serial entrepreneur, <laughs> which I yeah. kind of wanted to talk about. Um, I you're just so badass, like as just women in general looking up to you. It's um, it's oh sorry, um, so you know it's fine. Though. Yeah, I'm no sure worries. That off. I totally thought I had my mail off. I'm sorry. All good. Okay. So many women look up to you, like you were saying, and it, and I completely agree. I look up to you. You are just an inspiration oh. in general. No, I really do. Um, I mean, yeah, of course. And I, that's why I wanted to have you on too, because I know that my listeners can definitely learn so much from you and from the big things to the little things, like just the way that – just how open you are, how – willing to have these types of conversations, how that impacts other women. And just in general, you are a strong woman. And I love seeing that. And even though I don't have a daughter, I have you know, lots of nieces and you're the type of person that I would love them to look up to. And, and so Aww. it's just, it's, it's cool that you are easily accessible in that way. As hard as that might be for you sometimes, I really do think that it is it's beneficial for so many women, but I want to know what yeah. you're up to as an entrepreneur. <laughs> the need of wives. I know, right? It's, it's you awesome. know, the one thing it's being a winemaker and in the wine industry, it's, you know, it started out as a passion project and it's turned into incredible business. And that is something I've always believed in as an entrepreneur that um, you have to be authentic to what you're doing and yeah. If you're going into something looking just to make money and it's not authentic to you, it's not going to be a great business. Um, I've always believed I came from a family of salespeople and farmers and things that I would do great at. It was because I believed in something so much. Like I would sell this juice when I was like 19 and everyone's like, how do you do so well now? I was like, well, I believe in this. So I'm passionate about selling it to you. And that's where I thrived being an entrepreneur because whatever I was doing, I, I had to one want to, I would want to drink it or buy it or whatever it was I'd have to, but there had to be some authentic purpose or a part of me in it. Yeah. Um, so wine was just something I would naturally drink all the time. I was obsessed with Napa Valley. It, it got to a point where I was like, I just feel like I belong here. 
And I made great friends here. And then I got the opportunity to get into the wine industry and actually be a part of it. And I was like, that's a dream that I thought I could do maybe in my fifties or sixties, but like now, and they're like, yeah, now. Um, and then it just, it's turned into a big business that we're even, we've grown so fast that we don't even. Oh, it's good. I love it. (laughs) I love it. Don't worry. (laughs) He knows he won't nap because see, and this is where I was like, should I go to my podcast room? But I thought I'd be good here. He knows I'm here. He wants to be with me. Like he can make a, when I a special up. appearance, <laughs> right? Do you want to say hi to him real yeah, quick? Yeah, I definitely do. Mateo, you want to say hi? Come here. You could say hi to Sasha. Come here. Okay. But then when you say hi, no, come this way. Come around. <laughs> but when you say hi, then you have to go. Do you want to go to the park? Okay, but you can say hi real quick. You want to say hi to everyone? Okay. Say hi to Sasha. Hi, handsome. Hi. I love your shirt. Oh, say what's on your shirt? Yeah, but what's on your shirt? Are those trucks? They do. I love trucks and cars. Hendrix does too. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't take a nap, huh? Also, your hair is awesome. You're just so, I mean, it's so awesome. I love it. We were supposed to get it cut last night, but he's going to get it cut Friday. But yeah, I and I always tell him, don't cut too much, but yeah. he's my wild. Yeah, I know I you want to touch your thing, but can you say bye-bye? It's yeah. yeah. It's oh, awesome. <laughs> telling a story. Okay, well, say bye-bye. I'm going to go to the park. Go to the bye. park, okay? Go find, Have go so find much fun. Say bye-bye. Say thank you. Bye, bye, bye. I love you so much. You go have fun at the park. He's just—he's so sweet. I love his little voice. It's so yeah. cute. He sounds like he has like a bit of an English accent, and I think because of Arda, the mix, yeah. So, yeah, he's definitely gonna have, I feel like, somewhat of an accent, um, which is so cute. I love it. But he sounds like a little English boy when he talks. It's awesome to us. Yeah. And he has such an imagination. That's why I knew the minute he saw himself in the camera, he like just started doing his like pretend stuff. It's so great. <laughs> it's so great. It's so cute. Um, so back to being an entrepreneur. Yes. See, that's where you know mom life and an entrepreneur. Absolutely. Um, but what's incredible is Bonita Bonita grew so fast. And the growth every year is just incredible that we can't keep up with the grapes. So Brie and I have been working really hard on like, okay, how can we provide our wine worldwide, yeah. um, but with our taste? Because the thing is, is like when you get into mass production, changes. You're, you know, sometimes you just pour wine or pour sugar into your wine and it, it's just shit. I don't like it. So um, we, we've been on the hunt. We've been through France and there's some places we love in France and even some productions here. Um, Napa is just hard, especially with the fires. Right. Um, you can't, grapes are really hard to get a hold of. And you're going to see over the next few years, especially with that 2020 fire, that Napa wines are going to start to get extremely expensive. And that's just because so much grapes were lost. Um, but having that and like even some, some of our other companies, uh, I just watching my mom, my mom was such a boss bitch, like growing up and Mm -hmm. she was such a great example for me of like, you know, I want to be like that one day. And even when she went through the divorce with my dad and I kind of felt it, like, I remember thinking this at 15, like, I don't ever want to depend on a man. Like I had that in my head. And so I just knew I really wanted to make my own money and be able to be on my own two feet and live the life I want, but knowing I can earn it. Um, But I've made a lot of mistakes as an entrepreneur. Um, One thing I've realized is when you're nice Mm -hmm. in an industry of like, being your own boss, you get taken advantage of very quickly. And um, that's been a lot of learning lessons for me. It's like, you know what? I've realized I want to be called a bitch. Like, it's not a bad yeah. thing. It means like they're actually not, I want to say scared of you, but they respect you in a certain way. Um, yeah. And that's been like my biggest learning lesson as far as other companies I have had that I've either walked away from and just knew like, this isn't my purpose anymore. Um, but not wine. Yeah. Wine has been incredible. Wine is there to stay. <laughs> That's honestly, it's so frustrating because in, in business in general, whether it's in my 
the acting side of things or now as an entre- entrepreneur myself, I – I have worked so hard. The majority of my teens and 20s, I've worked so hard to be the nice person, to be in favor with everybody, to make sure that, you know, I'm not seen as the bitch or the complainer or someone being, you know, um, loud unnecessarily. I I just – I had this desire to be professional all the time. I'm putting those in air quotations because – I have now come to realize that I have missed out on so many opportunities and so much success that has been lost has been because I just, I wouldn't stand up for myself. I wouldn't take that stand. Oh, can you hear me? Sasha, I think I lost you. Oh no. Oh, did, okay. It froze for a sec. Okay. Recording in this world. Recording in the... Oh, okay. I think there's just a little bit of a connection issue. Oh. And it says a live video will return when their internet improves. So I think is it my internet? It's just off for right now. It seems like it. It says when their internet improves. So I'm assuming that that means that it's oh. yours. That's so no crazy. It's showing full bars. Can you see me? I can't see you, but I can hear you, which is also totally oh, fine. Yeah. It records I all of it, so me. I do have your already. You see me? Yeah, I could see you. Okay. Hmm, that's interesting. I know. I'm not sure. Hopefully it comes back. As far as I know, sound is still being recorded. Oh, there you are. Oh, yay. You're back. I'm sorry about that. Oh, my gosh. No, not at all. Yeah, for sure. That was Uh, definitely the first time that happened, so we should be good. Um, Perfect. Oh, so, yeah. stay being professional. Yes. I I have come to realize now in my late 20s that it's (sighs) that professional side of me, I I don't regret it because obviously I always want to be professional, but I took it too far what my definition of professionalism was, was inaccurate. It made Mm. everybody else's life easier, but it was a disservice to myself. And I definitely am not as far along in certain ways. You know, you, you, you never know what would have happened. You can't go back, but based on certain circumstances, yeah, I absolutely. I'm like, yeah, well that totally, I let that fucking slip away because I didn't stand up for myself. And Mm -hmm. Becoming a mom has definitely changed that. But what I would say is it's because I don't give a shit about what other people think about me anymore to a degree, of course, you know, balance. The pendulum does swing. You got to find that that middle ground. Um, but as a woman in business, do you feel like it's a little unfair in ways – at least this is how I feel is that sometimes – When a man is just being like hard about, let's just say negotiating, like, no, you know, their number is their number and a woman does it. Sometimes a woman is called a bitch versus a smart businesswoman. The way that a man, you know, might be referred to is just, it ends up being different. And I, I'm just curious if you've ever experienced that or not. Yeah, I definitely feel like, um, At times when I have voiced my thoughts, whether it was on creativity or a direction I felt like the company should go in, it would be like, oh, that's cute. She has thoughts or (laughs) like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it it was never taken serious. And then the company would go in another direction and it wouldn't be as successful. And it's like, yeah, because I know my audience, I know my fan base and I know what I want. And I know this company because this was our idea and this came from here and you're not here. And I I've noticed that, especially I think being a professional wrestler first, that sometimes when I come in to something more on the business side, whether it's a producer, um, being a co-founder, an entrepreneur, um, just having more of a voice. And I feel like I, I remember in the beginning of it, um, it was just like, Oh, cute. Like the wrestler has ideas. Like, and I was never taken serious and, and especially being a woman, 
And I have been in those meetings where I've, I've had thoughts because I took my job really serious as an executive producer on Total Divas and Total Bellas. But especially with Divas, like I worked hard for that credit. I, two years, I wasn't paid for it. And then finally, I was paid as an executive producer. But I really wanted to prove myself of like, I'm serious about this. Like, I want to have creative input and I want to help with the cast and all the things. And sometimes I, I felt the eye rolls. I didn't even need an eye roll. I right. felt the eye rolls off of body language or stuff they would say after I had opinions and thoughts about things. And I would sit at home and, and I would, I would research and I'd write all this stuff down. And, and I was so excited about it all. And I just remember thinking like, I can't wait to one day to show them. It almost gave me more fire to do yeah. more because I was like, okay, I'll show you. Like, you're not going to take me serious now, but I'll show you. Um, so that was the only benefit of in a way, I guess being degraded was like it um, gave me more motivation to prove everyone wrong and yeah. show them my work by my success or that my ideas worked. It's somewhat sweeter on the other side, I feel like, then oh, as yeah. well. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, it tastes so good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It is. It's it's interesting. I'm lucky to know so many women in business and so many different avenues and starting a, if you're my own companies, it's, it's almost like you were saying, it's almost beneficial to be underestimated and, yeah. and using that to your advantage as much as it's shitty and it sucks. It's, there's actually a play there, which is interesting. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, I love, I love learning more and more about business in general and what it takes and, how, like you were even saying, you know, you know, your audience, you know, your brand, you know, what will work and yeah. truly using that as an asset to reach people in the way that you want to reach them is so valuable. Um, and, you know, like even something like this, like women in the nude podcast, I wanted to start a podcast for a long time and there were so many different avenues that I could take. And yeah, I was just kind of like, well, let's just start it. Why, why am I waiting? Yeah. I know I know what I want to say. I know my community. I know who I want this to be for. I'm just going to do yeah. it. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Why not? Um, right. And it's like taking those initiatives, taking t removing the the doubt, taking the risk, knowing that you're capable of it rather than, you know, self-doubt all the time. Uh, I think that's just something that's super important and a, a lesson oh, yeah. that you learn, you know. Totally. I mean, you, I tell people all the time, you have to go on things and not be afraid to fail. Yeah. Failure is a part of life. And the greatest thing about failure is come success in some other way. And yeah. there's nothing better than to go through life and go, I tried, it didn't work out. It wasn't meant to be instead of going through life and be like, what if I did that? Yeah. Like, would it have been something I'd way rather do something and fail. And I have failed at things, things that I Same. thought I would <laughs> Be amazing at yeah and it's like the greatest thing you gotta throw the ego to the side and laugh at yourself and go well I thought that would work and that didn't it's okay and then there's some things you take a chance on and you're like whoa I knew it like this this worked and it feels great and that's why I take chances all the time and sometimes I know people are like god she's crazy like here she goes again. Like, when is she just going to calm down? But I'm just so the person that I don't want to be on my deathbed and ever say what if. I don't want to say what if about business life, about personal life, about things I wanted to do. I, I just, I want to live it all. And, um, and I think I learned a long time ago that you cannot care what people think and you have to put your ego aside. Like, you know, Deepak says, Ego is edging God out and I fully believe it. And when you think of ego that you take, even in your you know, relationships or even to yourself, um, it never does you good. And when we could like not care about not having a cool Instagram post to say like, <laughs> like we got a gig or something's doing well, when we could just like let that go and like, who cares? Like there's nothing greater. Sometimes I won't have shit to post for months. I'm like, that's cool. Yeah. I, I'm like living present with my son and it's great. And there's so many other things in life that like fulfill me. And, and I've just realized like, I'm so not afraid to fail. That's awesome. It happens. Sometimes it sucks really bad, but you know what? It's like, it's crazy what can come from that. And that's what I always tell people, like, go take that chance because something always comes from it. When you like do the work and you look for the signs, it is wild to me that 
when a door closes, I know people are like, it's a saying and a door opens, but honestly, like if you open your eyes and you listen to that sign, something opens that you are meant to do that is going to fulfill you, maybe your bank account, but will fulfill you as a person. So yeah, we all hope it's our bank account. (laughs) Most of the time it is. (laughs) <laughs> totally. Yeah. And that failure you know? side of it. I mean, you never, as it sounds so cheesy, but I'm going to say it anyway, you never truly lose, yeah. right? Like you're saying, like there's always a lesson. Yeah. A lesson is so valuable. Right. And I, growing up, this is somewhat of a sidestep, but growing up, I always decided to try and learn from other people's circumstances. So yeah. I always wanted to be a sponge. I, anything that happened, good or bad, I, I wanted to learn from it. And I did. And I learned a lot of valuable lessons. But you you can't go through life just doing that. You have to experience yeah. some things yourself. And that's yeah. also been its own process. Because I was afraid of making mistakes, I, I kind of got into this mentality of like, uh, well, no, I'll, I'll just learn from everybody else making these mistakes and I, and I won't try, you know. And yeah. – yeah, there's some things that I definitely didn't, I don't need to try <laughs> to know. Right. Uh, yeah. But yeah, totally. But yeah, as an adult, uh, as a, a wife, a mom, uh, a businesswoman, so many things that I want to do in life, it's, it is about risk. You, you have to. Uh, it's, it's essential you, you too. Really yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think too, a big part is like doing the work on it, not just deciding one day to do it, but like, journaling about it, thinking about it, prepping for it, like getting yourself there. So then when you, you make that decision, when you fail, it's like, okay, I did what I could do to get here. Yeah. And now when you've done the work on yourself, I think that's when you see what comes from that. And then you succeed, you rise up like the Phoenix and you turn it into something really special. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I tend to ask everybody this because I really like this question. It's a hard question, but you might have something that comes to mind. Do you – did you ever have like an aha moment, like a a moment where you kind of realized that you were a badass? Like things came together mm-hmm. and you're like, wow, fuck yeah. I like – I love yeah. myself. Yeah, actually. Um, you know, it was when – Fearless Nikki came about um, in the WD when I, when my, I was always Nikki Bella, but then the fans started to call me Fearless Nikki with everything I was doing in the matches and uh, my storylines on TV, but also what I was doing on Total Divas and Total Bellas. And I just remember starting to look into the stadium and I would have these matches that I was proud of, but I just remember having like, looking at the stadium and seeing it filled up with so much more women and little girls and they were in Brimo shirts or fearless Nikki shirts and had Bella army signs. And they were just, it was the Bella army and everyone was talking about the Bella army. And they gave me that moment where I was like, Whoa, what I am doing is not only working, but it's inspiring and motivating people. And it's bringing women to a male dominated industry. And that gave me that moment of feeling like, Hey, you're a badass. Keep doing what you do. Like, yeah. People may give you shit for not being filtered and saying what you feel or being so open and, you know, not letting things, you know, being a survivor, or not a victim and just all the things that maybe you would get shame for in the past. And it, it actually was bringing in this whole new demo of people being like, thank you. Like, I want to be like that. I want to be like you. I want to be fearless. And um, that was probably that one moment. It's like that's a good moment. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. That's definitely something mm-hmm. to be celebrated. Yeah. Oh yeah. When you have a little girl dress exactly like you and look look at you as if you were Wonder Woman, it's like Yeah. And I think that's when I saw the little fearless Nikki's everywhere, backwards hat and the socks and the jersey and totally. The red lip even. Yeah. yeah. It was like, whoa. Well, we this is crazy. We kind of talked about this yesterday. The um when a kid admires you or like wants to hang out with you what an honor that is um oh my god yeah so uh we were talking the other day uh Nikki and I and Brie about how when 
people like for some reason get mad when kids are like, super friendly or affectionate. So we call my son a space invader because he just is so friendly. He wants to hug <laughs> everybody and talk to everybody. And you were saying similar with Mateo and your your niece and nephew. And how funny that is when people are like, no, uh, like offended. It's like, how, how do you turn away a kid who wants to hang out with you? I don't understand. Yeah. That's like not wanting to kiss from a puppy. It's like you're yeah, like how something bad is your life? for sure, right? And and even if so, like just how what you want to live life like that kind of person. I always yeah people that carry like hate in their heart and anger and bitterness. I always feel so bad for it because I'm like, gosh, that must feel so heavy to drag around. Like just yeah. to even wake up and drag it out of bed and and drag it through whatever your day is. Like wow. The day you can feel how light life can be, and it doesn't even matter about the material things, just about pure love. A child yeah. wanting to give you that smile and pure love. Like we were at dinner last night and Mateo kept saying hi to everyone, like in his chair and was looking at everyone. And um, But people were receiving it so well. And you could tell like made them happy. Like, oh my gosh. And it was the first time he's done that. So then Aww. I was like, not even something. I was like, oh my God, how cute. Like he's recognizing everyone around him. And wanting to greet them. And, and then, you know, then I had to tell him after a little bit, cause then he, you know, it tells someone hi 10 times. <laughs> but, but I'll just never understand more people. I wish more people would just sit and do the work on themselves. Cause Brie and I will talk about this a lot. We're like, can you imagine if more people in this world had empathy and love in their heart and happiness? Yeah. Like how much better this world would be. And like, I guess when I'm here in Napa Valley and I look around and I look at the mountains and the vineyards and the trees and I hear the birds and I'm like, life is so beautiful. Like, and all over the world, we we have all these unique, like world wonders and what life is. And like some people just ruin what they, their time they have here by being angry and bitter and judgmental. And I just wish more people could have the love we feel in our a toddler, what a toddler right. feels in their heart. I wish they could have that. Yeah. This world would be so different. We thrive so much more. People don't even realize that. Yeah. It's like, just wish they could get some of the help. Like, uh, I don't know. I wish there was something that we all can do to help these people or they could just do for themselves. Yeah. It's so tricky. And it's such a, it's such a snowball effect. Um, and that's, that's to me, what's really sad. So like for my husband and I switch on and off, but usually I'm the pessimist and he's the optimist when it comes to people. And sometimes, sometimes it flip flops, but I'm a pessimist with it because, and I shouldn't be, but it's, it's just like, uh, these people are angry or they're, they're, you know, they're upset. And it's, it's probably this chain. It's like, what happened to them that day or how they were raised um, or something that's happened to them. And the idea of therapy and working it out and having people to speak to is, like I was saying, not as accepted or not very easily accessed. And that to me is an issue on top of it. It's expensive. Not all insurance covers it. Um, You're on a waiting list forever. You, You know, it takes effort to work on yourself and yeah, it does. not everybody has access to quality care and that's a huge issue. Um, yeah. and, and I'm hoping, you know, some optimism from my husband, which is with therapy, with this better outlook on things, hopefully people will start to, to choose helping themselves over just kind of wallowing in it if they can. Um, but it is, it is so difficult and being a mom, I feel like I notice it so much more. And I love to yeah. travel and yeah, traveling to amazing places or traveling to places that have some really terrible areas. It's, it sucks to see it. And it just, yeah, constantly reminds you how lucky you are. Um, I have you know, family all over the world and, and their situations versus ours. It's just so different. Um, and yeah, I, I just wish we could, you know, sprinkle as much joy as we possibly could. And social media yeah. is that outlet, you know, that that is the way to do it. We see so much shit all the time, so much negative, awful energy being put out there. And you just kind of got to hope that what you're 
the positive things that you're putting out there hopefully will help somebody. Hopefully that'll be that ripple effect. Hopefully, you know, I, Hendrix, the, the person that he wouldn't stop waving to at Costco has a better day because he was playing hide and seek yeah. with them. You know what I mean? Like hopefully those little things That's- influence somebody's day. You can, you yeah. can only, you know, hope and be as proactive as you possibly can. And yeah, it's just, it, I think too with social media and just in general, the way the world is having so much access to each other in in that way, right? Like we can talk to anybody all over the world. It's incredible. It's an an amazing tool, but we also know how bad it is everywhere, not just how good it Mm -hmm. is. And I think that's what's really loud, you know? Totally. It's always – the bad so much louder than the good. And I do believe there's more good than bad. We just, it's, you know, we don't see that. And, and I feel like one thing that we're lacking so much in this world is just listening to each other. Yeah. And it's like, everyone wants to be under, you know, heard, but no one's stopping to understand people and listen. And I think that's what's brought up so much hate, even worldwide. It's like, no one's understanding anyone anymore. But because we're not listening to people, it's yeah. like, it's like literally the world has become so defensive. It's like being in a relationship when you're arguing with someone and they don't let you talk and they're just so defensive and they just want to get all their thoughts out. And you're like, let me talk. Yeah. I feel like that's the world now, right? Everyone's just saying their stuff, but no one's like stopping to take a breath and like taking in what someone's saying to them. And it's like, if we could just do that and just listen to each other and talk this out, you know, whatever is with all the world issues and even the issues that gosh here in America, it's like, we can figure this out. Yeah. We're humans. We have souls. Let's just, let's talk about this and let's understand each other. Let's understand how they feel. Let's, let's be in their shoes for a second and now let's be in ours. And yeah, but no one ever stops and lets people have that. And so, yeah, it's so true. Just, and yeah, everything is happening this- so fast. Everything's so fast paced yeah. trying to keep up. But yeah, if we just took a moment to to listen to each other, and right now I'm really big on trying to establish boundaries in my life as well, you know, yeah, um, so- yeah, and finding that that balance, trying to figure out, you know, what with like, mental health, like mentally, what am I capable of, you know, listening to and talking about, and and the access I give people. And it kind of seems like an oxymoron since I have a podcast about being open and I am in general <laughs> an oversharer. Yeah. And I think to a, yeah. to a degree, it's really, really important. But on that really personal day-to-day level on what you can handle, what you can handle in your relationships, those boundaries are, are imp- important. And I think they go hand in hand. And I would love to I truly would love to sit and listen to somebody's point of view. And I think it's, I think it's respect. Ultimately, if people can just respect each other enough to give somebody the floor, hear them out, listen, and then have that reciprocated for themselves, maybe you wouldn't figure it out, but at least you would fully understand the scope of where that person is coming from. Yeah. And it's, yeah. And I think that's that's the thing, right? Like we aren't going to uh, agree on everything. Uh, there are always going to be problems that we can't we, – there are fundamental differences between people. But hopefully if we were just to sit and listen to each other, we could find that middle ground of respect and the world would definitely be a better place for it. Oh, so much. Yeah. Like just to, like, I always try to go in certain situations like, okay, they were raised this way. Yeah. They were raised to believe this. They went through this, which has made them become this. So how can I work with this person and understanding when they have these reactions to things? Yeah. Um, you know, I even try to take that in business of, cause I've realized like how I am in business is I like to be appreciated. So Cause I'm a really hard worker and whatever I do, I put in my heart and soul. And when I don't feel appreciated, even like a thank you or anything like that, um, it, it really affects me. Like, yeah. it, it's just, there's certain things I've been in business. And I'm like, wow, they couldn't even take a second to like, thank me for this or, or that. And I like, I just know that's my thing. Like yeah. I must be the love language affirmations. Like right. I need it. Um, 
And so I try to do that with a lot of like people in my inner circle or business partners, like, okay, what, how can I understand them better? And like, no, like, okay, they come from this place because of what, but, and I try to do that worldwide with people like, yeah. okay, this person's saying this because maybe his daddy has shoes like me. And <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like entertainment, I'm like, yeah, that's like kind of the world of daddy issues. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. You uh, know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but absolutely you're you're yeah that's that's it even yeah. in business down down to everything it, it really is yeah um down to everything this has been so wonderful i have one more question mm-hmm. i have one more question ah. i also ask everyone this now and it does not have to be sexual Ooh. but what makes you feel sexy oh I think what makes me feel my sexiest is when like, it's like Artem, like when he gives me attention of like that, he can't, like he wants to either rip my clothes off or just gives me a certain look because like, that's the person who sees you like full on naked and is with you all the time. And so it's weird because I could hear it from other people like, oh, you look good today or this or that. But when Artem can't take his hands off me, that makes me feel my sexiest. When my husband's like turned on by me just walking in the room or doing something what he thinks is cute or whatever it may be. Like he complimented me the other morning and I was like, oh my gosh, really? Wow. And he's like, yeah, like, why are you shocked? I'm like, because you never, I don't know, say my legs look fit. So like you say that, I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> no, that's great. No, absolutely. I, I. A thousand percent make hear that. My sexiest. Yeah. It's like, and you know, I just, I don't know if you feel this way, but I feel like being naked makes me feel like my sexiest. And then I put clothes on and I go, wait, I looked a lot different when I was butt <laughs> naked. Like what's going on here? I looked a I, lot better. <laughs> I lost your picture, but hold on. I, I hope you come back. I know, it's I know it's still recording the sound, but I... I completely agree. I feel so much sexier naked. It's when I put yeah. my clothes on that I have all the other issues. Yeah. I don't know like what that's about. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I don't know what it is, but yeah, it's – Yeah. I, I love being naked. I love being naked too. I love being naked and I love being barefoot. I'm like heel, yeah, heels yeah. or barefoot. I don't really like the in-between. Um No. I love that though. And I'm sure also Arden would be thrilled to hear that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so crazy because even though it's been, I mean, it hasn't been that long, but I mean, it has been a few years that we've been together, but like he still turns me on more than anyone. Like we have such great sex life like that. We don't fail in that. And like, I started having sex with him six weeks after I had Mateo and he goes, I, I don't think Damn. we're supposed to be doing this. And I was like, I don't care you are having sex with me tonight. Like there there's, that's just that. But I, he turns me on so much like sex is that's, there's no issue there. That's great. And I think, so two things, first of all, I'm pretty sure I Hudson and I were definitely on that same train that it didn't, I think we stuck to just the, like whatever they told us that it was like nothing past that. Yeah. Um, but there, obviously sex is a huge part of any relationship, but especially a marriage. I feel like there's this misconception of like, oh, well, you get married and then the sex kind of stops, which I think is so sad. Yeah. I think it's so, so sad. Mm-hmm. And I, I know everybody's different. I know every woman is different. But I feel like if you aren't enjoying sex, you got to fix it. It's so great. You have to fix it. <laughs> you got so to fix it. Like- off. Imagine someone else. Like I don't know. <laughs> like, like what's it's just think of. I always say like, think of a scenery. Like it, you know, sometimes like I think of like Artem showing up at the door and like being the UPS man and like right. you know we get naughty. Like you ju- just you that's you gotta you have to fix it for sure. Oh my God. Yeah, I yeah it makes me so it makes me sad yeah. for both parties. Honestly, I yeah. I there's just it's such a great part of life don't don't let it go you like that 
you need it. You need it for your mental health. You need it for your actual in general, your body, your sexual well being. It's yeah. necessary. It's so good for you. The endorphins, the, um, the calorie burning, that's a huge plus. Yeah. It's yeah, it's so important. And uh, I just wish that for people. I wish good sex for mm-hmm. everybody. You know, for everything. Talking it literally about- changes everything. It does. And talk about, and this is obviously strictly for adults, the happiness of the world. If everybody was getting good sex, imagine how amazing, amazing that would be. Everyone would, would be, be so much happier. Game changer. Like if everyone was getting good sex, like we would, I mean, I just don't even know if we'd have angry people in this world anymore. Yeah. I always true. feel bad because when someone's like a huge dickhead, that's immediately where my mind goes like, oh, they're getting bad sex or right. you hate your dick. He's always like, Nicole. And I'm like, well, they have to. Like, who's such an asshole like that? For sure. And the, it's like, oh, the tiny snow. dick syndrome, you know, it's a huge, no, it's, it's a thing. It's a total thing. It's a thing. Yeah. It's like, and by the way, like you can have amazing sex having a tiny dick. So totally. like, don't be so angry. Go work on it. Right. Like, yeah. Take dance classes because like, I mean, dancers can move their hips like no one's business. Like, I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm Say, lucky my that parents my- were dancers, so I've got like I'm very conflicted with this conversation. I know you're like, Ugh. but I will <laughs> say, like dancers are the greatest in bed. And when I've talked to other women who are with dancers, they're like, yeah, I'm like one well, the stamina, like it's that's not an issue. That's fair. Um, but the way they move their body, and it just keeps going. It's like watching someone doing the worm nonstop, like till you <laughs> orgasm. You're like this, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, they are very yeah. in tune with their bodies. They have to be. So they yeah, that, it definitely makes sense. And like, oh yeah. And they get so strong. Well, you dance. So you know how all of a sudden your moves and how strong they get in like the frames or the holds and like, and that would be Artem. Cause I would be like, I don't like my thighs, like one thigh is bigger than his head. Like this is like, I always have a thing. <laughs> like, like sometimes, you know, you look at your thighs and you're like, fuck. Yeah. You're man in bed. He made me feel very small. So I was like, okay, this, yeah. this will work. <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah, I agree. There's something amazing about mm-hmm. someone being really strong and, mm-hmm. and then just also a partner that you're comfortable with. I think that is also part of the, yeah. the, the marriage or the partner sex relationship after you get married, but also like after baby, right? It's like yeah. knowing each other so well, knowing what, the other wants and like communicating on, uh, you know, how and uh, how you want it basically. Right. Cause okay. also sometimes we have small little time frames now. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, you know, God, not to be tired. Yeah, exactly. And also, you know, if you want to try something new, then be vocal about it. Cause we don't want to waste yes. time. Totally. <laughs> yeah. It's just different. We're so I got Artem and I to like talk a lot about that. Cause I'm like, I just, Tell me exactly what you want that day. Like, what are you craving? We, you're lucky. I have a few holes. You have a few choices. <laughs> Tell me what you want. And you always are like, gosh, Nicole, and like, don't ruin like getting to it. I'm like, uh, but we know like he's about to, you know, yeah. Uh, or I'm about to go to sleep. Either way, let's make a decision. But, um, and then I felt like he's been the first person that I just feel so comfortable telling him exactly how I want it or what I'm feeling. And, and there's something like super empowering as a woman about that. I don't know, like to just like, I, I'm like, why wasn't I always like this? But I think it takes like just time for and sure. once you're comfortable in your body and all those things. And like, yeah, I love it that I get to be so open with him in that way. Um, yeah. It's so good. It's it's been a journey for me, absolutely getting to that point. And it's and it's never been Hudson per se. It's not like, you know, he was doing something that made me feel like I couldn't talk to him about it, really. It was just like my own personal journey progression. And I yeah. I want to stress that for other women that you know own it. You know, it's it, oh. like that journey is is yours and and you figure out what makes you happy and then make sure that you've got a partner that listens to you. I've, I've mm-hmm. been really, I, I, Hudson and I are so lucky. We, you know, we've known each other for so long. He's my best friend. We are so good together. We are good communicators. We are constantly working on our relationship. I'm so thankful for that. And I want that for so many people. And it was just randomly, it like 
dawned on me, I don't know, two or so months ago where I was like, you know, I really want this for other people. I wish, I wish more women were taught to tell prospective partners what they need. And this goes for yeah. anybody, you know, it, it doesn't, it, it, your sex doesn't matter, but I this idea of right. stepping, yeah, this is what I need. And it's, it, if you can't give that to me, then this isn't going to work out. It, it's like a, it's like yeah. a shortcut in a way of so much like heartache and, and stress and trying to navigate what somebody is thinking, you know, it'd be so much yeah. better if you could tell me how you want me to love you and you, you don't always know what you want. Um, but it would be so nice if more people were comfortable in that. Oh my gosh. I so agree. By the way, you'll save yourself from a lot of bad or mediocre sex. Yeah. Like, you know, but then it's, you grow in so many ways when you do that. Right. It's like, it's so true. It's, um, so crazy how scary, isn't it weird how scary it can be to say that, but yet you're naked and doing the most intimate thing with this person. Yeah. But yet you can be so scared to tell them the things that you want from that. Yeah. I, I used to have these conversations with myself in my head, like as I'm like in this <laughs> intimate, part, like, I mean, should I tell them I don't like that? Or should I do like, what do I, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I think cause as women we're such natural pleasers, um, especially when it comes to that. But, um, yeah, it's, it's crazy that when you can start to do that for yourself in that intimate setting, where you'll actually take that in probably the rest of your life. Business, for sure. It influences. You know what I mean? It totally yeah. translates. This has been so I wonderful. Was- I'm so glad we got to speak about all this stuff. I know. This is so great. I love this. It really is. And I would love to have you back anytime. I I love talking with you in general, just, you know, as a friend, yeah. but I think you're just, what you have to say is so valuable. So I really appreciate you coming on. Oh, thank you, Sasha. That means a lot. Honored to be yeah, a part of, of this. I just wanted to thank you again, Nikki, for coming on the podcast. You are just a stunning human and I can't wait for everyone to hear this episode. The conversation doesn't stop here. Stay connected with us by following us on Instagram, Women in the New Podcast, for behind-the-scenes sneak peeks, thought-provoking quotes, and updates on upcoming episodes. Subscribe to us on YouTube for full-length video podcasts, Sasha Petersa, as well as visiting our website, Women in the New Podcast, for more resources and past episodes. Thank you for joining us on this naked journey to wellness and self-love. Remember, vulnerability is strength, and by sharing our stories, we empower each other. Special thanks to my amazing producer, Hudson Schaefer, a.k.a. my hot husband, for making this podcast possible.